We're having a race. That's V the Moorhen. <laughs> I think the Moorhen's winning. <laughs> Ah, uh, he's given up now, bless him. One of the joys of owning a linear mooring, or a canal side mooring, linear mooring as they're called, is you have your own garden. And some people keep their gardens nice and tidy, and others we call it towpath clutter. It's just full of rubbish. I think I would like to moor under a bridge, but it does have its advantages. A, it's slightly quieter under the bridge, as you can hear, but it also means you can work on your boat and not have to worry about the weather. Beautiful, isn't it? Some lovely properties along this area. And the wisteria on the walls there looks absolutely gorgeous this time of year. Really lovely looking. Uh, good morning, everybody. And we're morning. underway again. <laughs> Yep, we're, uh, we're cruising on now. We're still on the Bridgewater Canal, as you probably gathered. So where are we headed for today, Chris? Lim, I think. Lim. Yeah, we're going out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going out in limb. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it'll be a lovely little cruise. It's only about an hour and a half, something yeah, like that. Yeah, an hour and a half to two yeah, hours. Yeah, it's not tops, far. Um, as we speak, we're just approaching a place called Stockton Heath. And then... Uh, we're going to stop in Lim probably for a day or two. Yeah, yeah. quite likely. We, can. we if like we can. it, but it's just if there's moorings, isn't it? Sort of. Yeah. It's getting busier. It's a popular little town, so uh, it's, look, finding a mooring in Lim is like uh, mm. winning winning the lottery, <laughs> if we say. <laughs> yeah, you feel as if you've won the lottery if you yeah, get you a mooring in Lim. So, uh, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed for us, folks, and uh, enjoy today's cruise. Yeah. In this week's episode, we continue on our journey along the Bridgewater Canal, heading towards Liverpool. The cruise sees us leaving our mooring just outside Moor and following the Bridgewater Canal through Stockton Heath. And then finally, mooring up inside Lim itself. And we're now well into Stockton Heath and this is Thorn Marine. Lovely little place here. It's quite an interesting chambry in the office, as I recall. Another sorry sight and yet another cabin cruiser that has sunk. It seems to be coming a theme this year that we've seen lots of cabin cruisers in this state that have sunk. Don't quite know why. Good.
Now, if you were us, <laughs> and we were you, where would you rather be right now? <laughs> up there. Up there or down here? <laughs> Answers in the comments, please. I'm oh, definitely down here. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I won't show you the next bit of graffiti, otherwise uh, the YouTube will strike up the video. I've got to say, there's some beautiful gardens in these parts. And people seem to embrace the canal more than they do around Cheshire. Absolutely gorgeous places as well. Lovely. It reminds me of the Middle Witch bungalows. Yeah, the, Chris, I don't know if you heard that, Chris just said, reminds her a bit of the bungalows in Middle Witch. Just found our retirement place. Okay. Plenty of mooring space for Amy Jo and a lovely shed at the bottom of the garden for my man cave. What do you reckon on that? Gorgeous, isn't it? We've just done a little wander around Lim this morning and uh, come up this little terrace. This building here is where Sooty and Sweep used to live many moons ago, although they don't now. <laughs> and what a delightful little terrace. looking back along the terrace. To the left is a bridge over the canal, which I think we're going, because Chris and Smudge are already going. <laughs> so there's Amy Jo on the canal down there. And again, here's the cottage that Matthew Corbett used to live in, with Sooty and Sweep. Although, sadly, he got COVID and he's now quite ill and has moved down south with his family. New owners have taken over the cottage, but lovely pump with the garden here. And we're going to head down this way. Excuse the wind noise.
don't often get to see Amy Jo from the side, so here's a prime opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm when I'm at the helm, she doesn't look anywhere near as long as that. The reflection is lovely today as well, isn't it? It is. <laughs> if you're ever in Lim on a Thursday, look out for this lovely fruit and veg stall. The vegetables and the fruit were really fresh and tasty. Yeah. One of the things I get up to <laughs> is playing the bass guitar, which I don't do very often. And the big black box there is the bass guitar for it. And the plastic container that Chris is tapping contains all, contains all the wires and took to go with that. But as you can see, it's split. Oh, it just so, fell off. <laughs> and it fell off. So Chris decided that we need to Jaffa cake it up. <laughs> Jaffa cake it. <laughs> I think she means gaffer tape, <laughs> but Jaffa tape will do. <laughs> work yeah, this is a work of art. Yeah. How'd they get up there? Found a lovely cool walk the Dingle Woods or something and uh, as you can see it's all tree lined and it's lovely and cool at the moment not that I'm complaining about the heat of course it's nice for smudge, it's nice for smudge though who's on a major smith sniffathon uh, but let's say that who's on a major sniffathon at the moment in front have existed for over 200 million years, an almost impossible length of time to imagine. However, they have only looked the way they do today for a small matter of 13,000 years. In common with much of the northern England, the landscape of Lim was largely shaped to its modern day appearance by the effects of the last ice age. The house just across the busy main road here, this is its view out the window. Absolutely gorgeous. I could wake up to this view every day. There you go. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed that little trip round Lim and the cruise to Lim and uh, the Lim Dam. It's really pretty round that way. But we just want to pop on very quickly to say that we've just been to Crick Boat Show, haven't we? We certainly have. Fantastic day we had at Crick. And we both must say thank you to everybody that came up and said hello or waved from a distance. It was was a bit manic, but it was yeah, fantastic, it was, it was wasn't indeed. it? And a lot of people recognise us from the uh, Channel 4 <laughs> series, Narrow Escape. So thank you very much for coming up and say hi yeah. to that. And as a result, we've gained um, some more subscribers. So good. for our new subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. We really appreciate that. But... As a way of an introduction, I'm Steve. And I'm Chris. And this little fella here is Smudge. <laughs> and we're the crew on Life on Board, Amy Jo. So thank you so much for signing up and watching us. Yes. Hope you're enjoying our vlogs. Uh, um, just wanted to say that we went to Crick, as you know, and we were there for Gary's uh, cancer research beard trim. I had a new yeah. camera and it didn't work out very well, but I did manage to get these few shots. <laughs> Aquavista were hosting the event and Dave Brinklow manager introduced and set the scene. 
obviously Gary and Derek from What's On Board were having their beards trim, and it was the turn of Derek first to have his trimmed to rousing applause. And then it was Gary's turn. First of all, the children got their go at trimming the beard, and then Nicky finished it off and cleaned it all up afterwards. And Gary made this speech. But thanks to everyone that's donated. It doesn't matter how small, how large. Thank you very much for all your donations. Let's try and beat that £4,000. As I say, just Google Chuggerbug Beard Shave and you will see the link there. So please, let's just beat £4,000. Well, there you go. Brilliant time was had by all. We didn't get to see much of the show, to be fair, but uh, there you are. So that's all I'm going to say for now. And... Uh, Keep safe, look after your families and friends, and we'll say bye for now. Bye. bye. Well, we're currently sat in kill services with a police car one side of us and a police car at the other side of us. And I don't know if you can see through the windscreen of the car, seven or eight police officers. <laughs> And we're sat in a car. And we're sat in a car that don't belong to us. <laughs> it's a bit frightening. <laughs> well, now Smudge has become a TV star. He's starting to deal with his multimedia now on Mum's phone. He's answering his text messages and his Instagram posts. <laughs>